Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm Tony. And we are from Let's Travel Family. Today we want to talk to you about boondocking. Let's start, what is boondocking? Boondocking is camping in your RV somewhere where you can camp for free without hookups. Now, I say that, but some people say boondocking is also like dry camping. Dry camping is where maybe you'd stay at a national park campground and pay for it, but you have no hookups there either. So it really depends on who you talk to as to what boondocking really is. So what do you mean by no hookups? Okay, so no hookups. No electric, so you can't plug into anything. Um, there is no hookups for your gray tank or your black tank. Um, and you have to get by with the water that you bring with you for fresh water. So we have learned so many tips about how to boondock. Um, we've been following lots of friends of ours that boondock a lot that we want to share some of those tips with you today. So we have an onboard generator in our class CRV that we can run right off, if you literally push a button and it starts the generator to run right off of our gas tank. And we're able to use that whenever we need to, to power up our espresso maker, um, the microwave, AC if you really need it. But the idea with boondocking is you stay in places where you don't need air conditioning. Um, otherwise, you can also use solar. And we recently just got a small solar panel, but we have friends of ours that have a lot of solar and extra batteries on their RV that if it's a really sunny day out, they never have to power up the generator at all. So free power from the sun as a full hookup. Yeah, well, it's not really free. <laughs> solar is kind of expensive. And that's why we didn't invest big time into it, but we got a small panel for, what, $150 used from friends of ours. Um, and that's able to power enough that it charges up our one onboard battery. We have one. And we can charge up our laptops and be able to actually work during the day. Well, how do we keep our food cold then if we have no electric? So that's the next one. So there's generator, solar, and then propane. Our fridge runs off of propane as well as electric. So when we're not hooked up to electric, then it runs on its own off of our propane tank, which uses very little, doesn't it? It sips it, yeah. Yeah, not very much at all. Um, so propane is another fuel that we use um, that generates energy. We also use it for... Um, Cooking, heating. Yep. So it works for our stovetop, our oven, and then also for our heat. So we are boondocking right now um, in a cooler climate in the evening. So our propane actually helps um, helps us stay warm at night because it kicks on the furnace at night. So you said no power. How do we get water? Okay, so water is different. Fresh water, we have a fresh water tank on board. Every RV is equipped with one, usually when you buy them, but you need to pay attention to how those work, how big it is, and how much you can bring with you. Um, some people are comfortable drinking right out of their fresh water tank, so if you fill up somewhere where you know that it's, you know, not contaminated water, you can drink right out of your tap. We bring our Berkey with us. And so our Berkey works as a water purifier, and then we're able to get drinking water that way. Otherwise, the fresh water is also used for doing dishes and showering, oh. sort of, if we have time for it. <laughs> well, how do we get more water, though, when we run out? Yeah, so we do run out of water. Um, we either drive our RV somewhere to find fresh water. So maybe a campground nearby will let us um, dump our tanks and fill fresh water. Or we bring, um, what is it called, a jerry can? Yep. So we have a seven gallon jerry can that we can bring with. And if you're boondocking with friends that happen to have two 60 gallon water bladders and they have to go fill up, then? Then they help you out. Yeah, they just so take you boondock with friends yeah. and we have all this fresh water that comes our way. It's pretty awesome. Stinky stuff. Where does that all go? Yeah, the stinky stuff. The gray tank and the black tank especially. So when we are boondocking, we fill up our gray tank really fast if we do a lot of dishes and if we shower. So, we try not to do as many dishes. Sometimes we buy paper plates, which then fills up our garbage. We'll talk about that. But we also sometimes will wash with biodegradable soap. And I'm okay taking our dishwater when I'm done washing and just dumping it outside if we're in the desert because you're helping the plants grow. Now, when it comes to showering. You tend to shower, let's say, a little bit less when you're boondocking. Yeah. Dry shampoo is my friend. Um, baby wipes. Our kids and I and Tony, we use baby wipes a lot. I'll tend to boil like a pot of water um, and then the kids will use warm washcloths and soap and wash their bodies and then we're good for the next day. So you just tend to do without showering. One other thing about showering we have is our outdoor shower. True. So if we have a lot of extra fresh water, like we had mentioned before, when we're boonocking with friends who have a big huge fresh water bladder that we can fill up with, then we could take an outdoor shower and then the, you know, in swimsuits and it just goes outside and doesn't fill the gray tank. But what about the black tank here? 
the black tank. Luckily, because we no longer use toilet paper in the black tank, mm -hmm. ours doesn't fill up nearly as quick. We can go near almost two weeks. Yeah, like 10 to 14 days for our family of six on, I don't know how big our black tank is, do you remember? Uh, 30-ish gallons. Like a 30 there. gallon. I mean, we're in a 33 foot class CRV, so it's not a giant black tank. But the tip is to not put your toilet paper in the toilet. You put it in the garbage and your black tank can last you quite a while. At some point we do have to dump and so then you have to pull all of your slides in and get everything closed up and you find a dump station. Where do we find the dump station? You can find those at local campgrounds. Um, the place we're staying right now, the city has a sanitation department and they actually have a public uh, RV dump available for five dollars. So a lot of them, um, you know, five to ten dollars and you get to fill your fresh water and dump your gray and black and then you come back to the same spot and boondock again or you decide okay now we did that let's move on we're already in travel mode we'll go to the next boondocking spot. And one other note is always bringing your trash with you. Yes so let's talk about trash. Yep. That's something that I don't think I was prepared for when it came to boondocking. I was all in the whole black tank, gray tank, fresh water, power but never thought about how much trash our family creates every day. Like she said, with the less dishes, so we use paper, but then you fill up trash quicker. So much. So it's about a bag a day between the uh, between the bathroom garbage and the kitchen garbage. It's about a full bag of trash. For our family of six yep. every day. That so you, is so, so horrible. Yeah. So you Ugh. can't just leave it outside either, because a lot of these places you're on the wild. What else is out in the wild? Animals. Critters. Yeah, we don't want them digging into our trash. So with our setup, we have a minivan. And if we can't put our leave our trash inside if it's too smelly, then we end up putting it in the back of the minivan, which to be honest, it smells up the minivan pretty quickly. Um, if we're boondocking with friends and they have a pickup truck, we'll ask if we can put our trash in the back of their truck until somebody goes into town and finds the trash, um, a dumpster somewhere that we can dump it off at. So something to note there, there's not a lot of free public dumpsters around. Yeah, that's a good point. So what do you do with a large kitchen bag? If you're in somewhere near, let's say, down the road from us is a National Forest Campground. We can go down there and use their dumpsters. Mm -hmm. You can also go to local gas stations. Um, they have the trash bins usually by gas station pumps. And in you my eyes, it's better to keep trash in a trash receptacle. Than to leave it out here in this leave beautiful wilderness. Yeah. So we are trying to find trash places. You know, there's a couple apps that we mentioned on our blog post, but um, on Let's Travel Family, one of them's Campendium, but I'm trying to remember, it does Allstays also tell you where there's dumps and trash? Yes, Allstays has uh, Allstays the dump too. locations. Most dumps will have uh, trash receptacles of some sort, so mm -hmm. there's always an option. Um, yeah, so there's yeah. something to think about. Packing in and packing out is crucial yeah. because we've because we've been boondocking a lot recently, we've seen a lot of places where people pack in and don't pack out. Oh, and, it's, and there's trash everywhere and our kids sad. are out there with gloves on picking up trash. Yeah, so you always want to leave it the same or better than you found it. Yeah. One other thing about trash that we've done before, and I've heard of other boondockers doing this, is putting your trash in your shower. Now, I know it sounds funny, but if we're not going to take showers very often, and you only want to smell up one room of your RV with a door shut, why, why not? not have it be the bathroom? Yeah, the bathroom's going to... It's going to stink anyway. You do bathroom. your business there. It's a bathroom. So we've done that multiple times where we've put the trash in the bathroom, and I even hang it up so that we don't attract any critters or you know insects into our mm -hmm. RV as well, where yep, it's just, just hanging. Hang it over the shower yep. rod and yep. you know, keep so it away from bugs well. and critters. Yeah. What do we do when we're boondocking about getting internet, Tony? Being a digital nomad, you got to be connected 24-7. Well, 24 by 5 at least. We do some weekends where we don't have cell signal. Yeah, and and some of those are the most amazing places to visit. Nice. But we do need cell signal and that's what we use to be able to get internet so we can work and, and provide for our family and make this work. So how do you find cell signal? There's lots of apps out there. Uh, one of our favorites we use, it's called Coverage, and so that is a composite map that brings all the carriers together, and you can drop a pin somewhere and see what kind of coverage you get from the four major carriers in the United States. So if you're more interested in learning about how to get internet in an RV, click the link up here. We're going to show you in a different video all about Tony's like full outfit of how we get internet in an RV from what gear we need, what's, um, what antennas you need, do you need a booster, um, and all, everything he's talking about. So if this is gibberish to you, then click that link and check out our internet in an RV video. Nerd level. We are on to where are our favorite boondocking spots. It's really hard to just name a few. It is because <laughs> you get so far off the beaten path into 
amazing like right behind us is Mount Elbert, the tallest peak in Colorado, and we're camping in its shadow. Yeah, and on the other side are beautiful twin lakes. It's gorgeous here. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, and so this I would say is definitely one of our favorites so far is Twin Lakes, Colorado. Um, there is a, I think we found this one in Compendium, mm -hmm. and it was also recommended by friends. So sometimes it's who you connect with and where you learn from it. But, ah, oh, this one's gorgeous. We took the kids down by the beach and down on Twin Lakes, and it's only been in the 60s and it's in June, so we don't have to run our air conditioner. We get to be out here and just enjoy the sunshine and the nature. Slight downside with that, if there's any precipitation, there might at, be snow. We're at 10,000 feet. We might be seeing snow. <laughs> we might snow be getting snow. We're 30 minutes away from the inner, what is it, Intercontinental? In Independence Pass. Independence Pass, which is like four feet of snow. Amazing. So we're thinking about taking the kids up there, putting on our jackets and our hats, and going out and throwing some snowballs around. So right now Pretty we're in cool. the snow cap Rockies. Where else is some of our favorite spots? Okay, another of our favorite spots, one of my very favorite, was just outside of Zion National Park in Utah. And we camped there with our friends as well. Um, with Clementine and Peter from Where is Clementine and we were able to get this giant open space spot next to each other overlooking the beautiful canyon and we even took the kids on a hike there. We were able to hike down in the canyon, excellent cell signal, what was it, 30 minutes into Zion? Yep. 30 minute drive into Zion, um, free, you can stay for up to 14 days, it's BLM land. Right, so that's something to note in case we didn't cover it. All these beautiful favorite places you want to stay, they have different regulations whether it's BLM, Forest Service, mm -hmm. um, USDA, different people manage different areas. So just know your rules and just try and respect those rules. Most of the rules are seven or 14 days. Correct. Most of what we've seen. 14 Not to all. 16. 14 to 16 days yep. in one place. And then you need to move on to somewhere else. But you know what, by that point, we're ready. Right, there's also what they call long-term visiting areas over in the Southwest. Quartzsite being one of them, you can actually get a permit oh, yeah. uh, to stay there for an entire winter. Yep. In the same area, you can park in the same spot. So that's not free, but it is dry camping mm -hmm. because there are no hookups. You're out in the middle of just kind of the wash. Yeah. And so that's an option too. So another favorite one that I have to give you guys and tell you about or give a plug for, I should say, is the amazing state park that we just went to. Goblin Valley. Goblin Valley State Park in Utah amazing boondocking spot but what's the negative zero connectivity <laughs> no cell signal whatsoever you can't make a phone call on AT&T Verizon T-Mobile none of it for about it's about an hour's drive to, to get cell signal. To cell signal but it's gorgeous and the kids had so much fun climbing around in Goblin Valley it's like these hoodoos that they can climb up in and they let you climb all over Ah, oh, it was just gorgeous. So we planned that visit for one night on a weekend, knowing that we were going to take the weekend off of working and not need cell signal to work. So we went in, shut off all the electronics, and it was it was amazing. Yeah, it was awesome. It was so awesome. Where else were we before Goblin Valley even? Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. So that was, I would say, our fourth favorite. And that's just outside of the National Park. So, Five minutes outside oh, the gate. So close. We were able to drive right in in like five minutes um, and be all, you know, be able to experience Bryce Canyon, see all that it had to offer. But we also enjoyed the campsite. The kids played so well with the pine trees and they built forts and they even set up a tent yeah. right there. And we were like five minutes away from a local rodeo and we got to take the kids in for a fun rodeo. That was fun. Yeah. So you never know where you're going to find these spots and where you're going to end up. Yeah. All right, those were like our four favorite boondocking spots. We have more, but I want to hear about what recommendations you guys have. Have you been RVing for a while? Do you have favorite boondocking spots? Or do you guys have any questions that we didn't cover here about boondocking? Maybe you're not on the road. Maybe you're thinking about RVing or taking a one-year trip and you're wondering about this whole dry camping boondocking thing. If you have questions, leave them below and ask away. We will respond. Let us know. All right, guys, it was so awesome connecting with you again. Remember to subscribe and keep watching. We are so determined to get these videos out every week to connect with you guys. Take care. All right, bye, guys.